Here too, uh, we've seen irrevocable uh, change or transformation in the therapeutic landscape. We spent about 20 years uh, running clinical trials in locally advanced disease comparing chemoradiation to chemoradiation plus other agents, uh, empiric use of TKIs, monoclonal antibodies like cetuximab, increasing the radiation dose, giving the chemo up front or out back, all negative trials. And in one fell swoop, Pacific sort of washed over us like a tsunami, and uh, it was a strikingly positive trial, unselected patients, chemo radiation, folks who had completed their treatment, had no evidence of progression, randomized two to one, Derva, Dervalumab, PDL1 inhibitor versus placebo, striking PFS benefit, threefold improvement from about six months to nearly 17 months uh, for PFS. There were still some skeptics like myself. Remember this was, uh, in patients, it was a global trial, and many of these patients had not been um, staged the way we would stage in the U.S. Uh, uh, pet imaging was n not routine in other parts of the world, and I had speculated that perhaps uh, there were 15, 20 percent of patients had occult metastatic disease, and they were getting derva versus nothing, so naturally they do better. But uh, despite that, we see a survival advantage overall, about a 10 percent improvement in two years, going up from 55 percent to 65 percent, has a ratio that's well under 0.8. Uh, so essentially, and anyone who's a candidate, it doesn't have pneumonitis and at least is stable uh, after chemoradiation. Dervalumab for up to a year is our new standard of care and the standard of comparison. So needless to say, there's tremendous interest in moving Derva and other PD-1 and PD-L1 inhibitors into upfront concurrent with chemoradiation. There's interest in looking at combinations in that consolidative or maintenance setting. So a ton of research going on in this arena, but uh, Derva's here to stay.